would, yes, if you yes, would. Well. All right. Yes, please. Hello, and thank you. My name is Beth Ferrier. This is my statement. I believe that Mr. Cosby drugged me and sexually assaulted me that night. For years, I did not tell anyone about what he had done to me because I was afraid. I felt threatened by him. I did not think anyone would believe me. I want Mr. Cosby to face justice for what he has done to me and to so many other women. I hope my coming forward inspires any other person harmed by Mr. Cosby to have courage to come forward and to tell the truth about what happened in the mid-80s. I was an aspiring model and actress when I met Bill Cosby in New York City through my then agent. Mr. Cosby pursued me and we ended up having an extramarital affair for several months. A few weeks after I ended things with him, he called me and told me that he was coming to Denver, Colorado, where I resided at the time, to perform at a now defunct club. I went at his request to see his performance. When I arrived backstage, Mr. Cosby greeted me. Get it out. Get the when lie out. Get the lie Mr. Cosby greeted me and handed me a cappuccino telling me that he made me my favorite coffee. And after I drank it, I felt dizzy and lost consciousness. The next thing I knew, hours had passed. I woke up in the back of my car alone. My clothes were a mess. My bra was undone. And my car was in the alleyway behind, alleyway behind the venue. I felt confused and disoriented. I had no idea what had happened to me. The last memory that I had was drinking Mr. Cosby's coffee. He approached me from behind. Oh, no, no, no. We gotta I get reached back over to my you. shoulder and grabbed oh, no. my right wrist. Oh, no, we gotta get it back to you. Closet Chronicles, this is your girl, Shaka. I'm going to address this. Um, for Closet Chronicles. All right, so I've been silent because I wanted to make sure I got all the information I needed. And um, I'm gonna address this now. The closet is currently under renovation. <laughs> it's a mess since my trip. So I'm going to address it now. And the clip you just saw was Beth Furrier explaining what happened to her. And I'm just going to address it in, on my level. I don't know Bill Cosby. He doesn't know me. He's not paying me. I don't know this lady Beth. She doesn't know me. She's not paying me. So all I can do is give you how I see things and how I'm raised. And you may not agree. You may think I'm wrong, but I'm right. I want to start this off by saying that Bill Cosby has been married longer than I have been on this earth. If it wasn't legally married to Camille, he was with her longer than I have been on this earth. The world knew him as a married man. Whatever relationship he had with his wife, there should have been a knowledge that he was a married man. Okay, so we're going to start there. Um, when dating a married man, there are risks you have to take. Because you see, if a married man decides to step out and date you, you are now a Jezebel. A trollop. A hoe. And hey, we've all been there. But once you find out, you're supposed to stop. Now, just listen to her statement, 
and I'm just going to break it down the right way. She was coming forward to inspire others. I am a woman, but I am not inspired to tell you about me running around with other women's husbands. That is something that I'm going to take with me to my grave and hash it out at the end of the line or in the boat, write the full statement to get to St. Peter or to get out of purgatory. If that's how you believe. When the Catholic school Trump ties. She says she was an inspiring model and actress. What type of model were you? You see, currently I'm in school advancing myself, and there are people who model for you to do pap smears, uh, prostate exams, B12, 13 people going up in the snatch and, and uh, sticking fingers up in the hoop to do. Um, what type of model were you? Were you a couch model? Like I said, I don't know her. But I mean, once you know somebody married, and you on your own decide to go to a married man's home, your whole hookup has fallen apart with me. Okay. Now, if you did it and kept it to yourself and you benefited from it, Closet Chronicles. Okay, okay. So, in the 80s, when I was watching the Cosby Show, and mind you, I grew up in the Price of the South Bronx, so the Cosby Show just showed me. I know it wasn't no guy, ain't no way in Ham Hill. There was no lawyers and doctors married. Although that is the life I'm living now. I am living a Cosby life. It's not me. It is my offspring. Let me fix this. Yeah, nipple fell out. I don't know if Cosby looking. <laughs> you know, but that's because I supported them. So you could say that he was a mentor for me. He let me see that there was other things out there. And he acted this role. He chose to act the role to make us look positive. So Huxtable, to me, is a good man. But that's the role he played in. I also love old girl in the burning bed when she set old husband on fire. That's the role she played. Now, I do tend to keep matches when... Oh, Uh, it's better to divorce them than set them on fire because the laws are pretty strict. I digress. Let's get back to Helen. She said in the 80s she had an extramarital affair. And feel free to stop right now and rewind it and listen again or go on YouTube and pull up Bill Cosby's accusers because I want y'all to hear the facts. Excuse me. This is my special coffee. My special coffee. When you make it for me, everything in there is what I want. So she said that she had an extramarital affair with Bill Cosby. That means somebody was married. But for her being the female saying it was extramarital, oh, look at the baby arms. I want to go on the limb saying it was Bill Cosby that was married. You see, y'all don't know if Camille was in another room looking through the peephole and this was some family freak creep. See, you can't be messing with other people's husbands like that. If you want them, take them outright, mess up, home wreck them, and keep them. Don't go back and forth. Don't do it. All right, I'm gonna put some battery power in this. Let me Put some battery power in there. Okay, so. <sighs> she said that um, she was called by him, summoned by him, because initially he pursued her. He wanted her. She might have looked, I, you know, and to go to see him at a comedy show, which she didn't name the comedy show because it does not exist anymore. It's defunct. She went. When you call me after we're no longer together and be like, hey, boo, meet me at the comedy show <laughs> and did Billy. That is what you call a booty call. And if I'm not mistaken, that is exactly what they called it in the 70s. Bring your booty on. I'm Bill Cosby and I have money. So she went. 
um, this might be a two-part series because I want to know how to answer this. When she got to the, the comedy show, they had a show, and he she watched the performance, she should have left. You know, we cool and everything. You my homeboy, but I'm about to go. But she wanted some of that good, good, because she was used to it. It's just that when she got it before, it might have been one or two Quaaludes, not three. You know what I'm saying? And, or it might have been a different dose. Now, depending on who your deal is, you don't know what you're getting. And if he's coming to another state to do a comedy show, he don't know what that state is dealing. It could be laced with something. So you took a risk asking for your favorite coffee, which automatically comes with a Quaalude. But you might got an extra hit because he is in... Where the hell he was? I don't know. Another state. You drunk your favorite coffee. Then you're going to try to change that it was his favorite coffee. You know, you drunk it. And coffee hot. Hold on. I guarantee you drop pill in there. I can taste it. Why she ain't stop? Or was the coffee just in some type of little, I don't know, representation of him? And then she um, said, you know, Bill, I'm an inspired actress. I ain't got no work. Can you hook me up? He said, nah, I can't hook you up. Bam, bam, bam. I got to go. You know, pussy was good. Thanks for hooking the boy up. You know what I'm saying? See you later. Uh, yo, boots, hey, walk into her car. That is exactly what happened. And the reason why she was in her car disheveled and messed up is she don't remember. It's because she drank her favorite coffee. He threw his ass in the car. That don't mean he got some. Bootsy could have got some. And maybe he did get some. But you went there. Now, I'm going to turn this around. I need an IT person. Let's see what Helen Hayes got to say, y'all. Hello. I was stunned and angry because he had no right to do that. And I didn't know why he would behave that way. His behavior was like that of a predator. He laid next to me on the bed and began, and began pinching my left nipple, pumping on my leg while he was grunting. I could not open my eyes. I couldn't move or say anything. I felt something warm on my legs, and I blacked out. 13, 16 hours later, I woke up to him clapping his hands, saying, Daddy says, wake up. All right, y'all, come back. This ain't funny. All right. Helen said, she don't know why he did it to her, but she didn't go into the depth what she did to her. See, Helen got class about herself. You know, these old girls don't like to talk. You know, she don't go into depth about what he did to her and how he did it or anything. She's just upset that he did it to her. Helen, are you upset because he didn't do it to you? You got to give me more information. So we're going to go ahead to Chilang. C A G L A N. Poor Chilane. I see Cosby got him a taste. He got him a, a particular type of woman he want. I didn't have a shot in hell because I look like Camille and got a mouth like her. Go on. Uh uh. No, no, you are not. Uh, Camille said, No, you're not pulling on my nipples. No, you ain't. You ain't humping on me tonight. And you ain't waking up nothing warm on me tonight because you knew you were supposed to do what you were supposed to do and you didn't do what you were supposed to do and you think you're going to run in these streets and not do what you got to do me and you mean, no, it ain't happening. Gone. So she said he pinched her left nipple. She was specific. And she said he humped on her leg. And then she said she blacked out which was probably just his chest hairs over her. And when she woke up, 14, 16, how many hours later, he was clapping his hands, saying, you know, Daddy, girl, y'all, pray for me. 
She was looking in my window. I went through that. And, but wasn't nobody husband. And he was pinching on them nipple. He was humping on me. So he didn't even get none of the good good. He was humping on her. And he did. He emptied out, you know, right there on her leg. So how you going to get some money? I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I had guys, you know, hey, nerd. And when you finish, come back. I come back, and they done did a whole full, because you don't find them sexy. They done did a whole full load. And I said, well, Mr. Jones, you don't need that medication. It looks like you have relieved yourself. You've relieved your pain. Would you like some tissue? You know what I mean? What was I, what was she, I was there. When, I, when it happened to me, I was at work. I punched down on time. I was in the right place at the right time. And I didn't give Mr. Jones nothing. You know what I'm saying? And he has some money, too. Rich people. I took care of some rich people. What was you doing, Chilean? Helen and Beth, what was you doing? I'm pulling up somebody else. What was you doing in that man's house? Uh, what was you doing there? Huh? I want to know what was you doing there? Because like I said, He has always been married. Because I'm thinking, you know what? If my dude going to cheat on me, he better do some freaky shit like this. He better cheat on me and do some shit he can't do at home. And you know what? I'm not down for rape. Don't say that. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think they've been raped. Sorry. I don't think they've been raped. I'm not down for that shit. <sighs> Let's see what this is. The last time I interviewed you, you were so brave. You'd come forward with your story involving Bill Cosby, that you were one of the women that he had drugged. You were a young woman at his home, and you detailed everything that happened also in your memoir. And I thought, what a, you could have risked it all. You know, this could have been the storyline, Beverly Johnson, and this is what happened to her. Why did you take that risk? Well, my principles, yeah. my conscience, and also I was lucky enough not to have been raped. Boy, so I, that's heartbreaking that we have to think neither, of life that way. I was, was lucky enough. Yeah, oh, so Tamara, that's sharp. You wearing that, that looks like old cat. So I felt an obligation to speak up for the other women because I know no what they were saying was true because it happened to me. But it, but by, by, by the grace of God, I wasn't raped because when you have that kind of a traumatic experience, I would imagine you'll never be the same person again so maybe i wouldn't be here today what? you know talking about how fabulous i look at 67. but you also talked to me about how your daughter inspired you to yes you said other women that you will never meet yes. will be inspired but it was also personal because yes. you're a mom yes of course of course how did she inspire you so i i mean i, I, I told her shit. when that incident happened and she cried and she did not want me to come forward because she was afraid of the repercussions and the backlash, which there was um, a lot. People were upset that you'd come out and Yeah, told. you know, we're living in a decade where, you know, we want to honor our black men, particularly. Oh, I'm about you know, to tell your being ass killed every day. I mean, you know. I'm you, about to tell your ass But half. this was something that was not bigger than that, but this was something that needed to be done and someone that needed to be stopped. And oh, hell I, no. I just really feel that it was just something that I absolutely had to do. And you know what's interesting? Because people saw me in a different light. Because yeah. people know my face. A dark light. And, you know, light. my accomplishments. But they've never heard my voice. You're trying to sell that book. And so I stood in my truth and oh, I used hell. my voice to speak up, not only truth. for me, but really to speak up for women yeah. and for black women. Oh, hell no. I'm back. Let's talk about this. Beverly Johnson. I gotta break this down. So Bill Cosby did mess with some of the Cocoa Bras. Alright, y'all. Beverly Johnson, I got notes. Said some things that pissed me off. All right, so Bevy Johnson said that she spoke up and she happy she won rape. So she gave it up. We didn't have to get her no uh, coffee. 
she went over there, took the Quaalude, took it, and gave it up. So she is here standing up for all the other women to put him away after she's had her career. She, she he didn't blacklist her. Like, because they, I guess, see, what happened was the other two women wasn't modelly like Beverly Johnson, so they didn't make it. And they tried to, I believe, get with Cosby to make it. I don't think he had anything with their career not making it or making it. Because look how Beverly Johnson look, look how they look. That ain't trauma. You just got ugly jeans. So, y'all didn't make it. So, y'all trying to blame him? Huh? So, anyway. Beverly Cup Mouth Show, she made it. She was probably giving him the sookie dookie all the time. Okay, so. She said... The reason why she decided to speak up, mind you, she's selling a book. They're called memoir. Say book. It's because her principles. You have no principles, Beverly Johnson. You slept with a married man. The only principle you have is a love of principalities. <laughs> How do you think that makes sense? And then she said her conscience. Your conscience told you don't sleep with that man he married. You just go in there for them quaaludes and to get some of that good good. He must have been slanging and chopping. Because <laughs> it had to be good. Unless they was doing it to get a job and they just was going over there just roughhousing. But anyway, so your 67-year-old pulled together face just says to me, the Beverly Johnson's a retired model who made it by keeping her mouth closed. And now she wants to come out because her money is invested in banks. She's there. She's got one foot in the in the grave and one foot trying to get there and she's trying to release all her demons and bring him into it you was his trick you didn't get raped because you had an arrangement now you're trying to get everything off because you could be 67 baby on the outside but 100 on the inside evil is evil out you stink and you piss me off what you mean you're gonna come out for all the black women i'm black i'm black and ain't no harlot, no charlotte, no half witty gonna come out for me. I'm not going with nobody's husband. And believe me, they rub up on me in the Walmart, the Myers. They even try to give me a hug. Try to hug. I don't want nobody husband because he coming after me. That's because, baby, his game off or you don't want to be bothered with him. And he just coming out to have fun. Okay, that means he don't deserve. If he, if he tipping out on his wife. He don't deserve her. Because he done got used to her and think he all of that. So he done learned the game, learned her habit, learned how she do things. And he think, I'm just extracurricular activity. And they come out and tell you they married because they don't want to spend no money. They come out and tell you they married because they just want to come out there and lay that old nasty thing. Why would I want that? Why? I mean, the guys you get that ain't married that you start a relationship with, you already getting, I don't know how many miles you're getting on that shaft. Why would I want that? Why would anybody want that? Unless you're a Jezebel. So don't say you came out for me, black black women. And if you cared about black men, you kept your goddamn mouth shut, slipped him a letter, let her talk to him, and did what you had to do. Or just kept your mouth shut and went on with your life. Okay? Because a whole lot of people was down with this. All right. If you really cared, you would have kept your mouth shut because he ain't the only one. You just jumped on a bandwagon. I'm sure there was a whole bunch of them um, that you was with, girl. Please count them too. You probably got bat wings. Oh, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a daughter. Is she going to be a model? Only because of your whoredom and your. You you ain't even. I mean, tell what you did to the. Tell what you did to black women. Baby Johnson, when I come back, I'm going to Google you. I'm going to look you up. I want to know what you've done for black women. Write a book about your whoredom? Hell, why you ain't calling sister up so I could have got me some Cosby Cosby? I know he would have made me famous. I ain't got no bad wings. This is good, good. Oh, wait, hold on. You ain't do nothing for no black woman. Closet Chronicles. You ain't got to like it. I don't give a damn. It pissed me off. Everybody got their own opinion. Free Kwame. So, and he's talking about because black men, what does him giving Quaaludes and so-called having sex with women, you know what I'm saying, and um, drugging them got to do with black men going to jail? What do I got to do with it? Stop that. Stop 
trying to do that. Just sell your book and shut the fuck up. I think I got another one for y'all. I might pull something up. I do, because... Yeah. Y'all need to hear a man's point of view, because this... This right here... This right here... This, that, this is a mess. I can't believe she even fixed her mouth to say it. I really can. Here we go. Y'all ready? Hope no commercial come on. My name is Beatrice Dixon. I'm the founder of the Honey Pot. I knew it. I knew it. Y'all, you know, y'all, nope. Y'all not getting no commercial. Oh, wait a minute. She the founder of the Honey Pot. That's a homegirl. I should have let that go ahead, though. Well, y'all, Honey Pot... She the founder. I'm so proud of her. That's the black woman that speak for me. I'm sorry. I should let her go through. I didn't know anything about the drugging thing, or I didn't know, I didn't know anything about that. But I did know about. I mean, my. If you just think about this, like, I had two situations, right, where. When I was auditioning back in the day, I was in, in New York. I, I had two callbacks for the Cosby Show. When you when you do well, they put you in a van and they take you to Queens to to Silver Cup Studios where they shoot the show, and you have to audition in front of uh, Mr. Cosby and the executives. All right, so there's a van of us, and there's a lot of girls going to play his his. Uh, TV daughters, friends, or whatever. I remember one time, it was like myself, Terrence Howard, and another guy, we were going for the same role. And it went to the other guy, not me and Terrence. But there was this fine girl that was like, ah. And I was, I was a killer. I was a killer. I usually, my, my record was pretty damn good. Had my eyes on the finest one. That's what I'm hooking up with on the way back, whatever, I, I put my gift of gab in, whatever, we go. We're getting ready to go back, right? And I'm like, hold on, hold, hold, wait a minute. One, one of us is not, is not on this bus. <laughs> oh, no, no, she's, she's, gonna, she's staying. What do you mean she's staying? Oh, Mr. Cosby is seeing to her that she goes, what? what? <laughs> I was like, this is way before I knew. This is like we're talking. This is eighty freaking. This the eighties and shit, right? Mm -hmm. or, or early nineties, wherever when that, that show was going on. And I'm like, I'll be damned. Next time, I go. Same goddamn thing happened. I'm dead serious. This time, two girls stayed. I'm like, this dude is just like this is a farming situation, you know. <laughs> this is a, you know, so. I, you know, that's without any, anything. I don't know anything about anything at that point. So when I hear about that, I'm going, well, yeah. And I, I, I kind of was like, I'd see some my friends had Playboy Channel and Bill Cosby was always in, you know, at the Playboy mansion judging the topless contest. And I was like, Wow, I thought it was really interesting. I'm like, here's America's favorite dad, and he's saying this lecherous stuff on this. I was like, that's, that's interesting. And they're not going after him, which I thought was not really a trip. So that's just my little firsthand knowledge going, oh, I guess the whole infidelity thing is that's just cool with folks. And, and if, if, if what he's saying is true, even on his side, if he says these women were consens consensual, they were. Well, so that means you are the most famous. Uh oh, y'all. Sorry, yep. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? You know, infidelity practicing cat on the planet, right? And everyone knows he's married, right? So that is and, public knowledge. But, but but then I always and then also was public. That's enough. What you got to say about it? They knew. 
So I just gave y'all a little over 30 minutes of my take on the Cosby Show for Closet Chronicles. Because it is. It's the Cosby Show. It's, it's, it's the Cosby Show for real. It's a different show, but it's the Cosby Show. Y'all might not agree with what I said, but everybody got an opinion. I'm going to get off the phone. Get off, you know, the recording. And I'm about to take this call from this late husband. Cause, uh, I don't know. If I'm wrong, let me go see how it is on the other side.